Close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Breathe in and out a couple good long, deep in and out breaths. And see how that feels. If it feels good, stick with it. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. This is something that's totally up to you to choose what kind of breathing you want to breathe right now. Nobody can force you to breathe in an uncomfortable way. And because the breath is the force of life, it only stands to reason that the more comfortable the breathing is, the better it's going to be for your health of the body and the health of the mind. So give it some attention. We just let it do its own thing, and, and that's why the breath energy gets into weird states sometimes. So learn how to pay attention to it and to nudge it along in a comfortable direction so you can have a sense of ease and well-being coming from within. This is a season when people are talking about being happy and being merry. We tend to forget that the true cause of happiness, as the Buddha said, is the things that bring the mind to peace. In fact, he said there is no happiness other than peace. But the other kinds of pleasures we get in the world are just little bits and snatches, but they're not real to, really true happiness and certainly not necessarily well-being. We think of some of the things people do in order to be happy and merry, and it doesn't lead to long-term well-being at all. Like the precepts we have just now, those are designed for long-term happiness. A lot of people go out and thinking about breaking the precepts is going to be fun. They have some illicit sex, they get drunk a little bit, and they start lying. Who knows, and end up killing things and stealing things sometimes, thinking that it's going to be fun. And it ends up being miserable. So we have to remember there are principles for what counts as true happiness. You want long-term happiness rather than short-term. You don't want a happiness that turns on you, turns into misery. You want happiness that stays happy all the way through when you think about doing it, while you're doing it, and after it's done. As opposed to things like you know, breaking the precepts, say, thinking about having a drink. Well, part of you may want it and part of you knows that it's not right. And then while you're doing it, your, your senses are dulled. And then afterwards, see, you think back on some of the things you did and said. And at the very least, you act in an embarrassing way, and sometimes worse, you actually cause a lot of harm. So that's that kind of pleasure, and exactly where the pleasure is hard to, is hard to say. I mean, it's there, but it's pretty, pretty minimal. And you want to turn around and look, well, what would give rise to true happiness? Something that would be lasting. Well, the, Buddha, the Buddhist principles are there for everybody to see. You learn how to be generous, and you're virtuous, and you learn how to develop good qualities in the mind. This way, the happiness that comes from giving something to somebody it feels good. You're in a position where you have enough to share. You're not so poor that you're out there grabbing from other people or just hoarding things for yourself. There's that sense of well-being that comes when you give something. And again, before you give, after you've given, you feel good about yourself, that you were able to overcome your selfishness for at least a little bit. Same with the precepts. And sometimes when you're tempted to lie or tempted to take a drink or tempted to have some sex outside of the marriage outside of what's proper. And then you say, no, I can't do that. I've got, I've got higher principles than that. Okay, you've, you've got some principles in there that are really valuable. Because if you give in to those temptations, many times you look back on it and you, you really regret what you did. And when you've got regret, it's really hard to go back and undo. I mean, you really can't go back and undo what you did. So it's better not to do it in the first place. And that way you prevent a lot of anguish in your own mind and the minds of other people. And the same with meditation. You're developing good qualities. Like now, you're, being, you're showing goodwill for yourself by breathing in a way that's comfortable, not getting the mind involved in unskillful things. And you're showing goodwill for other people. You're getting your mind more and more under control. At the same time, you're developing mindfulness, alertness. All these are qualities that are really important to have. The more alertness and mindfulness you have, the brighter your mind is going to be. The more clearly you're going to see things, the more clearly you're going to make decisions that are right. And so this way, this is how true happiness is found. When you say Happy New Year, may you be virtuous and may you be generous and may you meditate throughout the new year. And that's what the true meaning of that phrase should be. And the same with the Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay, may, may you be happy. No, don't do anything you're going to regret. It's as simple as that. But we tend to forget the simple things. We, we get too sophisticated and we think the simple things are just for little kids. But no, the simple things are for everybody. Because we can all be simple-minded, and we need simple principles to remind ourselves when we're being simple-minded, okay, no, that you don't do these things, you don't harm other people, and you do learn how to be generous. You do learn how to look into your own mind for true happiness, because that's the only place where lasting happiness is going to be found. So remember what it means to be truly happy. 
throughout this season when everybody's wishing everybody else would be happy. Well, you say you wish that they would be happy too in the right way. The world would be a much better place if we all really acted on the principles of genuine happiness and didn't fall for the latest fads and what seems to be fun. The principles have been around for a long time, and they've worked for a long time. There's no reason that we should abandon them.